Welcome IB Economics students to this video lecture today on a complete review of the elasticities. That means PED, XED, YED, and PES. I'll be going over the calculations and of each of these uh, elasticities. I'll be going each of the elasticities applications as well as the applications as well as its relevance. Okay, so these four elasticities, PED, PE. Uh, XED, YD, and PES, as well as their uh, calculations, explanations, applications, and relevance will be explored in this video. Now, going back, PED. What is PED? Okay, PED measures the responsiveness of the change in demand for a good when there is a change in price for a given product. Now, this explanation is going to be given in our calculations uh, equation for PED, that of which PED is equal to percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the ch percentage change in price, okay? So what we give uh, a, a quick a little cute way to remember uh, this formula is you Q before you P, right? So Q is on top and P is on the bottom. So percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in price. That's the calculations formula for the PED. Now. Percentage change, uh, for, for some of you people who don't know, percentage change is calculated by the uh, uh, difference divided by old value times 100. Now, the difference is basically new value minus old value. So what you want to do when calculating a percentage change is just take the new value subtracted by the old value, take that number divided by the old value multiplied by 100, okay? So if we do this formula, what we will get is a number either between 0 or negative, or it could be zero, it could be negative, or it could be infinite, okay? What does that mean, okay? What does that mean? When PED is greater than one, demand is price elastic, okay? When PED is greater than one, demand is price elastic. What price elastic means is that changes in price will have great changes in the quantity demanded. Now, however, when P is smaller or, or less than one, demand is price inelastic. That means the changes in price do not affect the demand for the good as much as uh, normally does. When P D equals zero, then that means demand is perfectly elastic. What does perfectly elastic mean? Perfectly elastic means when there is any change in price, demand immediately, when, when there's any increase in price, demand immediately goes to zero. Okay, that's what perfectly elastic means. And perfectly perfect elasticity is reached when PED equals zero. When PED equals infinity, the demand means perfectly elastic. Okay, so okay. Right, when PD is equal to 1, demand is price elastic, which means there is a marginal increase. When there is a marginal increase in price, there is a marginal increase in quantity demanded. Okay, so the higher the PD value, regardless of the leading coefficients or the, or, or the, uh, or the positive or negative sign, the more responsive it is to good changes in prices. So right here is just an example of a calculations of PD that's not really important. If you have questions, you could pause this or you could go back to our PD video. Okay, right here, what is this? Price elasticity of sub, uh, a p price elasticity of demand graphs and applications. So in the last uh, slide, we've seen that a PED could either be positive, it could be negative, it could be zero, or theoretically it could be infinity. Okay, it could be infinite. Now, when there is a perfectly inelastic graph, then the demand is like this: no good on Earth is perfectly inelastic. No good, despite the changes in price, is going to be having the same uh, demand. That's basically impossible. So this is basically theoretical. However, it is quite important that you know how to draw this graph, especially for paper one. A perfectly elastic graph looks like this. That means any changes in price will lead to a complete zero of demand. So only at this price level, at price level of 4, would there be demand. When the price level is 3, when the price level is 5, there is absolutely no demand for the good. That means it is perfectly elastic. So what, what are some real world examples to these goods? So a cigarette is not perfectly inelastic, however, it is quite inelastic. The slope for cigarettes is relatively steep because of its addictiveness. That is why the application of PED shows that because cigarettes are so addictive, the PED is relatively inelastic. Now, what is something that is very elastic? Candy bars, for example, is really elastic. So that is why the slope for candy bars is really, really flat. It's not stiff like the cigarettes are. That is very fat, flat because uh, there are a lot of substitute goods for candy bars, perhaps other candy bars, perhaps granola bars, perhaps other snacks instead of candy bars. Therefore, the demand for candy bar is relatively elastic to price changes. 
So this is PED. These two slides are PED. And let's move into the next elasticity, which is XED. Okay, what is XED? XED uh, refers to cross elasticity of demand. What does cross elasticity of demand measure? XED measures the responsiveness of a quantity demanded for good A given a change of price for good B. Okay, what does that mean? Now, to calculate XED, what we need to use is this equation right here. Percentage change in quantity demand for good A divided by percentage change in price of good B. Now, a percentage change is this equation. You know that already. So, um, across the elasticity of demand basically measures the changes in a, a demand for one product when another related product experiences a change in, a change in price. Now, a related product could either be a, a complementary good or a substitute good. A complementary good occurs when the XED value is positive, uh, and, 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 and the greater the XED value, the more these two are related as substitute goods. Okay, That's substitute goods. Substitute goods is that you could substitute one for another. For example, McDonald's and Burger King's. Those two are substitute goods. Complementary goods, for, on the other hand, are, are, are symbiotic relationships between the two. For example, iPhones and iPhone cases. Those two are complementary goods. Now, complementary goods is when the XED value is negative. The smaller the XED value, the more compatible related these goods are. Okay? So, looking at these last notes, XED, when XED is greater than zero, demand uh, between goods are price elastic. When XED is less than zero, which means when XED is negative, demand between these two are inelastic. Okay, now, what are the applications and importance of XED? Now, XED is important for firms and governments. However, not so much important for, uh, um, for normal consumers. XED, or cross-elasticity of demand, is so important for producers and firms because there are also able, because with XED, they are able to understand the effects on demand changes in a related good have. Okay, it's important for the board of directors to be able to know perhaps uh, potential fluctuations in demand when the price for other related goods changes. Knowing the demand would change when price changes for complementary or substitute goods. Now, what is an example of this? What is a real world example of this? Increases or decreases in the production of a good, for example, was a, is a great example of what firms and producers would do when they know that their rival firms or their complementary or substitute firms are, um, are, are doing certain price changes. So they will either look at these changes and say we need to wrap up our production in order to profit maximize or they'll look at these changes and they will need to decrease um, these uh, pr uh, these productions because of uh be because of you know because of the price changes in a, in a in a related good so the xed value tells producers and firms when whether they should decrease or increase the production of a good now why is this important why is xed important for government on the other hand a uh, governments uh, affect taxes and subsidy amounts governments may increase or decrease taxes and subsidies or related goods to encourage or discourage the consumption quantities Okay, so talk, governments could use this, one of the price control measures, and, and, and one of the economic measures for governments to use is, of course, um, is, of course, um, uh, usage of taxes and subsidies. So governments may impose taxes, on uh, higher taxes on gasoline, knowing that gasoline directly relates to public transportation, right? So, so because governments want to encourage the use of uh, the, 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 the further usage of perhaps for the further usage of public transportation, they will want to decrease or actually increase the taxes levied on gasoline in order to increase the consumption or the usage of public transportation. So this is the application of XED. YED, what is YED? YED measures the change in demand for a good when the income changes. So uh, it's important to know why YED, uh, people use Y because in, in macroeconomics, I is already used for investment. Therefore, uh, people use I to, to, to show uh, uh, income, okay? Why is calculated by percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in income? This is the formula and, and an equation for actually calculating the income elasticity of demand. And as you know, percentage change is calculated by the new value subtracted by the old value. Take this value sub, uh, divided by the old value multiplied by 100. Now, uh, YED, when interpreting the values of YED, when YED is greater than zero, the YED is positive, uh, is positive. 
and a good uh, and, and a good is either a normal good or a luxury good. Okay. However, when the yd is less than zero, or when yd is smaller than zero, um, there is a negative. So yd is negative. Therefore, a yd shows that these two goods or this good is actually an inferior good. So um, remember, uh, luxury, normal, and inferior goods. Luxury goods, uh, and and normal goods increases con uh, per quantity consumed as the um uh, as as the income rises however as the income decreases the demand for luxury and normal goods decrease and the demand for inferior goods rises so when yds become zero and one regardless of whether it is positive or negative they are considered to be relatively elastic however when yd is greater than one they're they're considered to be relatively inelastic so right here we can see the graph of uh, of calculations of showing vacation trips to hawaii that of which is actually a luxury or normal good and how the consumption quantity or the demand economy quantity decreases as there is a price uh, as there is an income change okay so and, and these right here is just calculations if you're not so clear on the calculations you can look at this or go back in the previous videos on yd in order to make sure because yd is a very important concept not only for macro microeconomics but also for macro economics okay now what are the applications and importance of yed so yd tells producers and firms the effects on demand changes in income will have on their good now, why is this important? The changes in demand for a good will change according to the good type, inferior, normal, or luxury, in correlation with the changes in income of consumers. So, uh, recessions during recessions, uh, there was just basically two quarters, two consecutive quarters, where there is a decrease in GDP. Uh, when that happens, a uh, consumer, uh, uh, consumer. Uh, uh, income usually decreases, leading to a uh, demand for luxury and normal goods to also decrease. However, in bull markets, uh, when, 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 when income and, 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 and stocks are rising, um, the demand for luxury goods and normal goods will increase. However, the demand for norm uh, for 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 uh, inferior goods will decrease. Now, why is this example? For let me give you an example: fast food versus sit in restaurants. Fast food restaurants are considered inferior goods. Uh, restaurants or like sit-in restaurants are considered to be normal or even sometimes luxury goods. YD tells producers and firms to either increase or decrease production based upon the changes in income for the consumers. So if you are an, uh, a fast food holder and you're currently in a recession, then you'll be doing very well because you are selling an inferior good. However, if you're in a bull market and you're a fast food owner, then may, perhaps you may not do as well compared to when you are in recession. Now, likewise, or vice versa, if you are uh, a sit in restaurant during recessions, you are going to lose a lot of revenue because consumers are not sitting in restaurants, seeing as how there is a decrease in income. However, during uh, bull markets or doing increases in income, consumers will go to sit in restaurants because it is considered a normal or luxury good. Okay, uh, and applications or uh, further interpretations of the YD values comes in this. As the income rises, demand for inferior goods decrease. As the income rises, then uh, demand for in normal goods the increase. Uh, okay, so so as income rises, demand for in inferior goods decrease. Demand for normal goods increase, and demand for luxury goods increase. As income decreases, demand for inferior goods increase, demand for normal goods decrease, and demand for luxury goods decreases. So this is also quite logical. If you just think about it, you may be able to, you know, make sense of this and able to understand the implications of the YD on uh, firms and producers. Now, the last elasticity, which is price elasticity of supply. What is price elasticity of supply measure? PS or price elasticity of supply measures uh, the responsiveness is quantity supplied or QS when there is a change in price. Now, similar to PED, it is a percentage change in quantity supplied divided by the percentage change in price or PES. Okay? So this basically measures, PES basically measures how much changes in the quantity supplied there is when there is a change in price. That's basically all that is asking. Uh, for PES, there's another very important thing, and uh, we have to think about the determinants of PES. Uh, why? Why? Why does why does some uh, goods increase production by a lot uh, when price increases? However, some do not increase production by a lot when price uh, increase. Now, this is all down to the determinants of supply. Determinants of supply refers to the uh, uh the why a PES is such a value. The first thing is resource availability. Okay, quite expansionary. Second is production and factor mobility. Third is storage of good. Fourth is production complexity and process. And fifth is time. Okay, so uh, this PS is actually really important. However, it's actually really complex. So uh, I will encourage uh, uh, IB economics students to actually go back and review the PS syllabus from this course. 
Now, interpretations of PS figures with PS is greater than 1. This applies price elastic. With a PS is less than 1. The PS is price inelastic, which means changes in price does not affect changes of quantity supplied as much as it normally does. When PS is 0, supply is perfectly inelastic. When PS is infinite, that basically means it's... it's, it's, it's uh, um, however, this is quite theoretical. That means supply is perfectly elastic. When PS equals 1, uh, there's, there is a unit price elasticity. Okay, so I hope um, so far these uh, four elasticities have been helpful. Um, so I hope so far these videos have been helpful and the uh, explanation for the four elasticities are satisfactory. Okay, so I really hope that these few videos uh, and, and this review video, of course, clears up a lot of confusion concerning the uh, the elasticity is concerning PS, P, D, X, C, D, Y, D, P, S, uh, P, D, things like that, okay? So if you guys did find this video helpful, then um, uh, tune in for the next one. Without further ado, um, thank you guys for coming and watching.